All right, so I have my coping saw and the blade is installed and I have my piece of wood already clamped to the table. When you're gonna use a saw, you definitely want your wood to be clamped to something sturdy because you're gonna be putting pressure on the wood. If you're using two hands, you kind of get off balanced. Um, so I definitely recommend having your wood clamped. So when you're gonna use the coping saw, it's gonna be cutting in the downward motion. So we're, if the teeth are pointing down, then the down is gonna be your cutting motion. So hopefully, I know it's kind of hard to see. The, the points are pointing downward. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna slide, I'm gonna pull down. So the points are pointing down and I put the blade on the wood and I pull down. You can, go, you can do a sawing motion, up and down, up and down, up and down. And it will cut that way, but your primary, primarily when you get started, you want the blades pointing in the direction that you want to cut. And then you just gently press. You don't press um, very hard. Your motion is more about using. So I'm my pressure right now. I'm pushing a little bit in toward the wood, but most of my force is pulling down. I'm pulling the saw blade down. I'm pushing down, 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 and kind of just holding the saw blade up against the wood. If you push the blade hard into the wood to try to cut harder, the blade is going to bend. You probably could see the blade bend. And if, if it bends, it's probably going to snap and break. It's a very thin blade, which the nice thing about having a thin blade, you could draw your line on your piece of wood. Um, and then you can actually, you can use two hands if you want to, to guide you. Once you get it started, you can go up and down, up and down, up and down once you're in there. And remember, primarily you're cutting on the downward motion. Okay. Um, but you could cut in a straight line or, I don't know if you can see from that angle, but I started to cut a curve. So if you had a curved line, you could use the coping blade, or the coping saw, to um, cut a variety of designs as detailed as you'd like. Um, the other thing to think about when you're trying to use the coping saw to cut off a piece of wood, so let's say for example uh, you wanted to make a little wedge, then you can cut, I cut in that way on this one, so then I could start a new piece, a new cut, in the other direction, sort of make like a V cut out, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second here. Notice I got my safety glasses on so I don't get sawdust in my eyes. So I cut in that direction and then I cut in that direction and now I created a notch. I'll give you a top view. So there's all kinds of things that you can do um, when you're cutting, again, uh, I said this in the sanding video, but when you're using the coping saw to cut, you're going to be creating sawdust. So make sure wherever you're doing this kind of work, you're in a place where it's okay to get sawdust. So if you're in the kitchen, you got a tile floor and it's easy to sweep it up, that might not be so bad, but don't be trying to cook your food at the same time you get sawdust in your food. If you go outside, the sawdust might blow away and you don't have to worry about it too much. If you're over a carpeted area, make sure you vacuum it up. When you're all finished, you're going to use your sandpaper to sand any rough edges, particularly after you cut. Um, watch out for splinters that might get into your finger uh, so that hopefully you don't get any splinters from the fresh cut edges. And uh, that's how you use a coping saw. So you can use a handle, you can hold the top as leverage, and whichever direction the blades are pointing, that's the direction you want to try to, especially when you're getting started, that's the direction you want to primarily saw. And so pointing down, and I pulled it down. Good luck to you.